right, we're going to read a one-shot now. It's called, simply enough, Science versus Magic. Uh, the art is by a favorite on this channel, uh, Yusuke Murata, who of course does the One Punch Man remake. And in somewhat of a similar fashion uh, to creating that, that famous remake of a legendary webcomic, uh, he's teamed up with another kind of cult hit uh, manga writer, uh, Inu, Inu Kurosuke, uh, who I haven't actually read this yet, but I've heard it's really good, the, like the ultimate RPS tournament. Uh, which was just like a little fan manga that he released uh, online and became a little bit of a cult hit, kind of similar to uh, One Punch Man or, or the works of Boone or um, any number of these kind of upstarts. And, and I think it's awesome that he somehow leveraged this into an opportunity, this, this little burst of fame, uh, into working with one of the greatest manga artists in the shonen genre around today, uh, Murata. And here it looks like, just with the Ultimate RPS Tournament, they've taken a very simple premise and are going to run with it in an extremely awesome direction, I'm hoping. So let's check it out. We have uh, what look like probably our two protagonists, uh, one on each side. Of course, this guy in the back is Science Man, equipped with like an exoskeleton type suit and who knows what else. And then in the front we have Magic Man with this... Uh, enchanted gemstone headpiece thing, I, I presume. All right, so Maho Ken, the Magic Fist, fighting style that blends, melds. What? Why did I just decide to make a word? Martial arts with elemental magic. All right. So this is two magician fighters fighting each other, trying to take the spot as the kingdom's rep. All right, all right. So this is the prelude. To the, the climactic battle against, I guess, the Science Kingdom, which of course is being led by Senko from Senku from from Doctor Stone. Um, everyone is cheering for Reita, who's our the guy on the cover, Pro probably gonna win. Here we see uh, some magic bursts. Um, looks like lightning magic. It's kind of cool. Because in One Punch Man, there really isn't that much magical attacks. You know, there's a lot of technological blasts. Monsters have, like, fire breathing and what have you. Um, and there's, like, telekinetic powers and stuff, but usually not, like, energy blasts from them. So it's kind of cool to see a depiction of just straight-up magic, you know? That's why I guess Homeless Emperor was such an anomaly uh, for Zombie Man, because things like that are so rare in that universe. I love this shot of the, the water magic swooshing around. Fire magic to strike. More graceful, more beautiful. That is the essence of Mahoken. Cool. That's the match. Winner is right up. Young Paji right is one. Right as a representative, we've got nothing to worry about. Here we see the citizens of the kingdom of magic. It looks like most of them have a similar kind of gemstone inset in their forehead, but not everyone. So it's kind of interesting. A little bit of flavor. And uh, I, I like the shots of the layouts of the arena and stuff too. I like that it looks like it's been a big tournament. We can see all sorts of uh, grounds for matches around them. Good fight, right? Good fight. Oh, look at this master character. So iconic. Any sleep of the exhibition institutes. I rain support. I know I can give my best. Absolute prodigy of Mahokan. Sure, sure, sure. 20 years old, greatest fighter in your kingdom. Sure, 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 sure. Whoever it is, the science nation doesn't stand a chance. Ah, but then we see. Looks like he's kind of geared up like a boxer. Looks like he has boxer shorts on. Yeah, cyber fight. Mixed martial arts battle in which the contestants are all cybernetically enhanced brawlers. Cool, cool. This guy also has like a jewel on his forehead. I don't think it's related. <laughs> Just felt like it was worth pointing out. Click data on their opponents and analyze it in real time, predicting their next movements. Isn't that what all fighters do? Do you really need cybernetic enhancements to do that? I mean, I know that's how people play fighting video games, at least. Anyways, this is the more the cybernetic part, of course. The fully enhanced robo punch. Nice, nice. More precise, more dynamic. That is the essence of cyber fight. Okay, so, it's kind of cool. Not just aesthetically, not just flavorfully, but they're setting up on, on more of a, a deeper 
philosophical tone which each of these fighters, like, what these fighters are, are actually trying to achieve, you know? And, yeah, like, the 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 pro personalities of the protagonists, too, completely different. This guy is super arrogant, show-off, trying to get attention. Submission Master against the Magic Kingdom is only six months away. Magic stuff is pretty amazing. At the end of the day, it's still human power wielded by a new normal human me. I fight with superhuman power. Pretty obvious we as nations of science are gonna win. Colin and F. This guy's name is Onigoro. Demon Goro. <laughs> uh, Goro is just his name, I guess. Onigoro, Onigoro. They're cheering and chanting. And again, so much different, right? Like all all these tiny little aesthetic contrasts I think are fantastic. But here it's a single octagon ring caged in surrounded by people, lots of, like, media presence. We see people with uh, cameras, people with the mics. There's, like, a commentator's desk over here. Um, gigantic spotlights beaming down on everything. Compare that to the, the Magic Kingdom's uh, tournament grounds, where there was tons and tons of little arenas. It seemed like for the grand finals, they just kind of chose one. There's one section of spectators, but it looks like most of them are just kind of enthusiasts. There's no big media presence. There's nobody interviewing him afterwards. He just goes and chats with his master. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's quite interesting. Two very different worlds. This world is split into two very different kingdoms. The Magic Kingdom and the Science Nation. They've gone to war more than once in the past, but those days are long behind them. Nowadays, they maintain peaceful relations, each state occupying themselves with developing their unique cultures. Well, isn't that nice? And then I guess they have representative fights to kind of let the steam off. I think that's a great premise. I w I've actually been thinking of a shonen series myself that has basically this kind of idea that nations fight wars by having representative battles, which is also in The Rolling Girls. But, you know, that show has like a bajillion things going on. Um, I think if you just took that premise and made it like a nice uh, minimalist, you know, very battle-focused shonen, it would be pretty great. Um, and yeah, this this seems like they have kind of the same idea. Yeah, they hold an international mixed martial arts competition. It's actually a huge festival. The best Mahokan fighter competes against the best cyber fighter in a grand sparring match for glory and batting rights. Right, right. So here we see the dojo. Our protagonist, Trey. Ooh, doing two finger whole body push-ups. Sure, I don't think that's possible, whatever. Oh, they do have an interviewer. How interesting. So there is kind of, it's not entirely archaic. It's not entirely like an old world country. Here we see some microphones that are like enchanted, uh, hovering around, recording them. Some, some screens to reflect light for better lighting, even though I don't see a camera or anything, but whatever. These guys dress pretty modern in suits. The interviewer's staff. All right. Can tell you if I have any natural talent. This so comes entirely from training. I say with confidence, I have trained harder than anyone I know. Come on, I fully intend to win. Complete faith in the training I've done. Thus, I have complete faith in my skills. Blessed with the support of so many people. Okay. And you can see here the the guy in the back taking notes has like elaborate earrings. And for all I know, this necklace that the reporter lady is wearing is also some sort of magical significance. So it's kind of cool. Like, you can see that the these martial arts fanatics are, are kind of an outlier within this culture. Like, not everybody is kind of taking this traditionalism as seriously. But that there's still kind of flavorful influences that um, this world of magic has on even very modern technological type things. But blessed with the support of so many people. Cheers, give me an unbelievable amount of strength. Bringing home victory for our kingdom is the least I can do to repay them. Nice, nice. All right, sure, 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 sure. And here's our good old master. His design just so iconic. All right. Let's try to tell Okay. Be less humble. Be less humble. Sure. <laughs> I guess that would probably get people going quite a bit. Though I have the talent, and though I have trained harder than anyone, the only reason I made it this far is because of you. 
unstinting support of my fans. Let's try to take the meme straight. Ah, how wonderful. And again, probably something that we'll see very much contrasted with the science person. And right now, I mean, I would give the magic person, like, 9 to 1 odds. <laughs> I think it would be quite shocking, given that this is just a one-shot. It's just supposed to be kind of like a fun, standalone story. If they did a twist, like the guy who's a lot more abominable, who who is selfish and bragging and stands for, uh, you know, kind of a media desecration of something that should be more of a holy art form or something. I don't know. It seems like it's, it's having overtones of this kind of uh, rhetoric, and I would be shocked if they subverted it in the end and had a uh, big muscly science man win over cool, humble, appreciative magic man. I'll have to practice that for the rest of the day. I have an appointment in the science kingdom. Oh, we're in the science nation. All right, so this guy, you know, he trained super hard too. Well, he trained the world's greatest training exhibition. Our power, world power is everything. I stand where I am because I'm the best and the strongest. Yeah, so he's he's using kind of a similar confidence builder. I trained harder than anyone. Dedicated myself completely to being the best. But there's no other level of. But my fans, my fans. All right, so this is it. He shows up to drink. Vitamin, good to see you right now. Oh, so they're on good terms. That's nice. I wasn't sure how they were going to kind of do that element. I go way back. Your friends. Regular old brawler back then, right? It was already famous. Here, jump him and grab some glory. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they're, they're kind of making this character a little more... Redeemed. I don't know. I was kind of expecting we would get the minimal amount of kind of like character situation introduction and then just fights, fights, fights for like 30 plus pages. Um, but no, okay, all right. We kept fighting. Eventually we got to be friends. Sure, it's going to give up. <laughs> got barred from ever going back to the Magic Kingdom. Sure, sure. Got into cyber fighting. Roll my way up the ladder, earn the spot in the exhibition match, and get another rematch with you right now. Finally did, yeah! Not the same punk I used to be. 80% cyborg now. No way you're gonna be. Ooh, so Raita being a little cocky too. I will be the victor at the end, of course. Sure, sure. And they're gonna drink and party. And look at look at these designs. Look at this robot right next to him. I love it so much. It's so cute. Look look at how happy. The robot is. <laughs> Everybody having a good party. Sure, sure, sure. I think this one person uh, with the long hair and like the white robot outfit and stuff is the guy that uh, Oni Onigoro beat in the finals, isn't it? So that's cool too. That's that's a nice little bit of flavor that they're buds. They uh, they hang out with each other outside of the ring. Ooh, Raita. Slamming him back. Drink, drink, drink. All passed out. Two best fighters and drinkers are right here. Don't you dare go easy on me in the exhibition. Half the reason I invited you is to make sure I can tell you that. Thank you. I'm no good at the social song and dance big time stars gotta do. Don't do public speaking well. Wow! Ah, oh, interesting. I lose the exhibition and I lose my current status. Who's on my fans too, probably? Not that I intend to lose. I had to wonder if you wouldn't. Try to get up to something out of concern for me. Hmm. That's quite interesting. So he lays it all out. He's like, I know that you've thought of this too. We have very different futures when it comes to, you know, surviving outside of the ring. We, we, one of us, <laughs> you, <laughs> is charming and sociable and, and has probably several fan clubs. And even if you lose... You'll still have all of that. You'll still have an entire career you can make out of this that doesn't involve actually fighting necessarily. But that's right. All he has is the fighting. That's why he was so braggadocious. That was why he was so arrogant in his personality. Hmm. Hmm. This is nice. I really should read that Rock, Paper, Scissors manga. This is really good characterization. I just like, you know, it's not like it's revolutionary. It's not like it's like mind-blowing. But it's just so... You know, like, it's just, it just feels like a real person just enough. It's like just this wonderful sweet spot between 
the the over the top fun caricatures of a shonen series, and then a character that you just want to get to know better, even if they're not fighting, even outside of the ring. Yeah. Now when I've shouldered the hopes and expectations of Ichigo. All right, six months have passed. It's the exhibition match. Extremely Dragon Ball inspired, but I guess maybe that's just revealing my ignorance and Dragon Ball was expired, inspired by real life tournaments or something. That's that's plausible. <laughs> um, but I, I think anytime you have this sort of tile grid, uh, the arena right in the middle, you're thinking Dragon Ball. And why not? Without further ado, let's move on to the main event, the exhibition match. So we still got a solid 30 plus pages of fighting, I'm hoping. I, I feel like Murata is just so pumped to go all out on a fight scene totally in isolation, one where he doesn't really need to consider kind of the context of the attacks and their, their relative impact compared to the rest of One Punch Man and the series going forward. You know, because I think, I think that kind of balancing act is somewhat difficult. You, you want to just kind of go all out. But you can't go all out all the time because then all out becomes standard and it doesn't feel like all out anymore. But in a situation like this, what, what do you got to lose? What more is going to come? So they're going to go all out. Which will emerge? Magic? Science? All right, the fighting begins. He uses some sort of flaming slash kick. Obvious who will win on it. Magic Kingdom's right up. Oh, so this is the, the cyborg guy. That lost to him in the finals. That I thought was out drinking with them, but maybe it was just another guy. And he's betting on Raita. Interesting. Obviously Raita. Ooh, a former champion, too. So this was, like, the former champion of the, the science side, I guess. Onigoro doesn't understand the correct strategies to use against my husband fighters. Every fighters don't augment ourselves willy-nilly. We step into the ring with very specific enhancements. What enhancements do you think you'd need to fight against the Master of Mahal Kem? Alright, so this is cool. I like this sort of commentary. I like that this can add some more depth and feeling of strategy to what we're seeing unfold. Um, I like very much that it's just some random guy. That the former champion is just like hanging around and just decides to spill all this wisdom to some guy in like a flannel shirt and shirting glasses. It looks like he's just from regular Earth. <laughs> I don't know how much this is starting with nimble movements. Massive amount of data you would need to dissect in particular and next move. Enhancements for both speed, both physical speed and processing speed. <laughs> just strips. <laughs> hey. You're a power fighter. Please argument you won't lay a finger on the map fighter. Hmm. Yeah, so far he's only just blocking. He hasn't even tried to throw a punch. I should have been chosen as the one for a representative. So right up. Ah, all right, all right. So both loser characters, no offense, are going to be kind of our co-commentators. Just how much of a prodigy right up is. Augment yourself for speed and power all you want. Never collect the data you need in time. Doesn't give you enough openings. He had many chances he would have gone for speed, but he only needs one. Smart move is building for power. Make the most out of one or two shots he gets. That reminds me of a, a great fight in One Piece. It's Frankie versus the novice CP9 agent on the train. They're on their way to Ayn's lobby. And and Frankie's, you know, he's putting up a fight. He's trying to hit him with projectiles and stuff. They're, they're going all around. There's a few transformations. Uh, the Frankie centaur emerges. Uh, lots Lots of good stuff. Um, but near the end, Frankie finally pins him down and is, like, preparing to punch him. And he's like, you think there's probably still a lot more fight left to happen? And it's almost like uh, the readers are thinking the same thing, right? Like, probably most of the readers are thinking there's still a lot more fight to happen. And Frankie's like, that's because I haven't even punched you yet. <laughs> he's like, once you take this one punch, that's it. And it's true. He he punches him right through the train, and then that's it for that guy. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> and it's awesome because, like, you know, up until that point, you're not really sure how strong Frankie is. Like, you, you know he's strong, but you don't know, like, is he at that tier? Like, I don't know. It's, it's so cool. So I, I get a very similar energy here. 
It's like, yeah, you, you think that this is just the warm-up, right? Like, you think, ah, oh, no, I, I took a hit. Too bad. This will keep fighting. No, that's, this is it. Mmm. He thought everyone of Onigiro's hits. He wins. He land even one punch on Raida. He wins. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, they are acting all high and mighty. They're definitely acting like they know better. Cool, cool. This is going to be an easy fight. I've got to hunker down and hang on. Take my time and collect all the data. Memories from when I ambushed <laughs> you again. <laughs> Just some punk. All the footage I could get on my hands on from earlier fights. I already input that data into my system. I distract from what he's doing right now. My chance will surely come. Defense against a cyber fighter, you have to give them as little data to go on as possible. Ooh, cool. Cool punch. The, just the dynamicism of these poses. I think it's so awesome. You can sense the entire weight and speed going into that punch. Lock with wire, hit with fire. Those are the basics of Mac Pen. Exact same stuff he's done in every other fight. Trying to keep his new tricks hidden from me. Mmm. -hmm. He doesn't know he doesn't understand cyber fighters at all. Flesh and blood human. You can exactly duplicate your movements from the past. Those tiny differences are more than enough data for me. Ooh, so on just like edge case after edge case after edge case, he sees what should have been a perfect replication of past behavior, kind of succumb to minor deterioration, minor minor imperfection, just the imperfections of being human, and then seeks out. Ah, you're going to stumble here just a bit. You're a little slow here, just a bit. And then blam. So, Raita mostly dodges here. Just kind of gets clipped on the cheek. Grazed. But the damage is obviously significant. Like, or the, the potential damage. Like, he went so far out of his way to dodge it. Not just blocking with water or whatever. Better than I expected. Wish I could say the same for you. Not seeing much in the way of growth or improvement at all. Is that really all you've got? Did go to beat you after all. Confirm one thing. If you lose this match, you'll say you promptly lose your status and your popularity. With all my strength, you will likely lose even your opportunity to make a good showing for yourself. Are you sure you want that? <sighs> all tools are used to put me in this ring. Ooh, ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Not all that, but right then. Here on out, I fight for real. Okay, so this is a new style. Flames of mirroring all over them. It's about time he started using them. Master giving us the scoop. I'm seeing a brand new style for some time now. I don't want anyone getting footage of it so he never use it in a match. Let me grow from adding it to his data collection. Exactly, exactly. Training this match for longer than anyone realizes. Looking forward to it more than anyone else. Alright, okay. So he's cool, explosive, fiery combo. This is another kind of depiction that Murata is, I think, just fantastic at. Like, multiple hits, and you see, like, the impact of each hit, and the the, the kind of, like, moving across the, the screen, so to speak. I, I think the genius of Murata... I don't know, this is a subject we can talk about a lot, and I'm sure I can think of a lot of examples, is that he doesn't just think in terms of, like, shonen he's seen before or martial arts that he's seen before for fights like this. Although, of course, those are both components. But he's thinking about fighting games. He's thinking about fighting video games, I think. A lot of the ways he depicts, like, combos and, like, powerful attacks and stuff, they have all of the drama, all of the, the sense of kind of, like, timing and... and uh, like, labbing it out, you know what I mean? Um, that seeing something really impressive in a fighting game does. You know? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I think it's pretty cool. That fire bit and cranked it up to a pure smash mouth offensive run? Like, all-star? What? <laughs> Alright, whatever. I'm trying to be the other guy before you can get all the data he needs. Such a smart idea. It looks like it's totally working, too. New style seems lacking in a good finisher. Nero is a tough man to begin with. He has a steel body on top of that. Whether or not Raida has some way to account for that. Okay. Nero knocked to the ground. 
the first down of this match. Uh, Raina, right, Raita, still, uh, he's, he's breathing heavily. You know, he's trying. More data to beat you. Okay. He's still kind of on this plant. I'm just going to observe. I'm going to focus on survival and observation until I can find that opportunity to strike back. Make as much punishment as anyone can dish out anymore. Hang tough and taking my looks give me time to more gather more data. It's only human. If I could just collect that data, I'm sure to find the opening I need. So this is kind of cool. And although they're not going to explain it in any sort of depth, it seems like this, this idea that there's some computer inside of him that's suggesting moves, figuring out statistical information on its own, constantly watching the fight as it progresses. That's that's pretty neat. And it's it's like feasible, you know. Um, but what I like it is that it leads to kind of an inversion, where normally it's the kind of uh, smaller, more nimble character with like a variety of skills that's like the calculating one. It's the one that's like, oh, I gotta figure out the pattern, I gotta figure out the counterplay, stuff like that. And then the big brawler guy is like, me, smash. <laughs> uh, how do I beat his smash? You know, we've seen that pattern a lot. But here it's, it's nicely kind of mixed up a bit, where, and this actually kind of makes more sense, that the, the me smash player character, whatever, uh, has to actually be a lot more calculating, because there's only certain situations in which that big smash attack is going to work. In fact, there's as few as possible situations based on the actions of the other player. So you really do have to be analytical. Like you really do have to be thinking all the time about that one opening. Um, and and in fighting games, I actually kind of see this mentality that people who pick the big heavyweight characters at a high level um, are are really kind of the most patient, analytical players. Like they can't afford not to be. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. All right, all right. Let's see. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of attacks on me. What's going to decide this fight is my one punch at the end. One punch! <laughs> oh, what a Whoa, he just did it! Wait a minute, he just punched him! He got one! He got a good one, too! He, he clocked him right in the chin. Right, it goes flying! He got through, right, it is down. It's the powerful punch that won him the Cyber Fight Championship. Is the fight over? Everyone freaking out, except for the two... Rival characters, just like, hmm, 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 oh, whoa. <laughs> but the guy's in the back. I love this guy with glasses, especially. He's just some guy. <laughs> it's like, it could be me. Like, what? <laughs> that one dead on. He's not getting up after that. Don't be so sure. Don't just throw him yet. From what I saw, he managed to avoid getting hit in any vital area. Okay. So he didn't even take it right on the face. That was just a body blow. Do it, get up. He's gonna be using that left arm anytime soon. Ooh. This thing you really don't get right at all. Hmm. Can't fight through that. This is over. You can't win. Maybe you do have a point. At least you would if this was just any old brawl. It isn't a brawl, it's a sanctioned match. I'm on a dimly lit street in a giant stadium. The power of the fans? Is that what he's referring to here? Because it's interspersed, of course. These cheers from his fans from the Kingdom of Magic. Cheers of support and encouragement from this card give me all the strength I will ever need. And delivering victory to them, then I can withstand any pain. Hmm. And again, we see a clear difference here. And my, my inclination is that the person who takes on the body and heart of the, the crowd is going to be the one that's uh, declared the winner. But, you know, we'll see. Um, also, I don't know how literally to take this, because it is, you know, just straight up magic. So, who knows? This could easily be a world where, where magic fuels strength. Or, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> I mean, magic fuels strength. But then also... Applause and recognition and cheering fuels magic, is what I'm saying. Y'all? Something like that? I don't know. Both on our last legs, let's say we put an end to this. Check for a shot. I say, hang on, observing this whole time. I have enough data. My onboard computer has calculated the opening I need. Next shot is your last right up. Win. 
An attack rush of yours, you leave yourself open for just one instant when your back is to me. Yeah, yeah, this kind of thinking I think is pretty cool. It's like actually just sitting there and watching the frame data. <laughs> uh, watching it frame by frame, figuring out, oh wait, there's a span of five frames here where you're not putting an active uh, hurt box out. I can actually counter punch if I've blocked up until then. One girl is tough, incredibly tough. To defeat him, I will need raw physical strength. More strength than I have, but that isn't an insurmountable problem. I will just use his strength. My advantage. The crosscut punch from from tomorrow's Joe. Yeah, it's so cool. All right, all right. Turn every last ounce of that strength back on him and counterattack. I really left myself open during the rush as bait. This computer to calculate that is the most probable opening. His full might exactly when and where I need him to. I've ever used this con tactic in actual combat. First attempt at a new failure. Ah, so that was that. Huh. He, he was actually trying to use this counterattack at that time. All right, that's kind of interesting. Really looks like he's going to win. Focus my fire into one point. Take all of Onigoro's might and momentum and add it to my own, no matter how tough he is. So he's aiming for his face. Onigoro, of course, throwing his whole body into this punch, so a lot of momentum coming from his direction, too. He won't be able to withstand this. Cool. A big spread, of course. Magic. Looks like it's taking out science here. That's the match! Alright. Kind of seems anticlimactic. I thought there would be, like, a, you know, stagger. Genius, you anticipated my counterattack and were one level ahead of me. Yeah, you shouldn't rely on your computer so much. You know, true fighting comes from what the heart sees and something like this. And then it's... <laughs> it's the again. I thought there would be all of that. Where's all of that? He just wins. All right. I guess they're running out of pages. Oh, well, I guess we're okay. He's, they're doing it afterwards. And oof. Big oof. Shouldn't have expected any less out of you, Rita. Even my best, but I still lost, and that's that. Ooh, people cheering for Onigoro still. He thought he would be just a, a no one after this. Doesn't seem to me like you've lost any of your popularity. You know, they'll start dismissing me, as an, <laughs> dismissing me as an embarrassment to the nation, I'm sure. Well, well, maybe. I don't know. Let them talk. I'll just work my way back up to the rough spot again. Next time I'll whip your butt for sure. Yeah. See you in three years here once again on the stage. All right, fun. Very fun. Nice, simple, good fight scene. Good characterization. Just solid characterization. Nice, uh, subtle world building that uh, really intrigued me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can really only say good things about this. Um, I, I liked seeing Murata's art. In such a different style. And of course, you know, it's not really that different from One Punch Man and, and the sort of things he's depicting and what have you. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. It was a good read. I hope to see more one-shots involving uh, both of these talents of the manga world. And uh, hopefully at some point I'll read the, uh, the World Rock, Paper, Scissors Championship. Because that looks like a lot of fun, too. Let me know. Have you read it? Is it good? Is there other things I should read by uh, this author? All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.